So you look at the legal framework, and the legal framework has to be very, very clear. And the guidelines have really provided um, which INEC, use in, using its constitutional powers, issued those guidelines. Where there is non-compliance with, with those guidelines in those particular polling stations, INEC needs to take a decision and communicate that decision to, to the public. It is unclear, as we speak, where polling units, um, the fate of voters in polling units where elections didn't hold yesterday, or where there, there are some cancellations. I, I know that it will take some time to aggregate um, this data and information in view of the fact that collation went into the night, even as at this morning, there are some wards where collation are still going on. So we would expect the Electoral Commission to provide that information to, to stakeholders. The second is around the independence of, of the Electoral Commission, uh, as the case may be. Uh, and the question is um, whether the Electoral Commission um, has been very independent in managing these elections or whether there have been all forms of interference from different actors. We know, and that is why these violence that we see across different polling stations in different states is giving stakeholders a, a, a serious concern. Um, reasons being that we know that there were attempts and there was pressure on the Electoral Commission to stagger the elections. Um, and that's public knowledge. And this effort targeted at um, disrupting elections in some locations, um, I, I don't think it's unconnected with the fact that um, the, the goal is to ensure elections doesn't hold in those places um, so that um, and we would have staggered elections. But the Electoral Commission um, has asserted its own independence um, to a large extent by ensuring that we have um, elections on one day and we don't have staggered elections, whether for the presidential or for the um, National Assembly elections. The, the third is around the neutrality and credibility of the INEC officials themselves. One of the things that the Electoral Commission did yesterday, which is worthy of recognition and commendation, was in Ungobala, in Imo State, where a, an electoral officer, the EO of that local government, as well as the SPO, were missing. They were nowhere to be found, and the materials were nowhere to be found. And it was just an attempt to compromise or to rig the election in that particular local government. And what happened? INEC ensured that these uh, officials were arrested uh, and they, they are detained and they are going to be prosecuted. I think that needs to cut across as well. In polling stations where re, um, officials, INEC officials, um, didn't comply with the guidelines where the dereliction of duty, it is in, INEC needs to take action and also communicate to members of the public because the neutrality of the Electoral Commission is central to the credibility or the success of any election. The fourth is around the security agencies and the role they played. It is quite disturbing, very, very disturbing, how the army conducted itself in yesterday's, um, in these elections. And uh, uh, despite the fact that the, the electoral law, section 29, is very clear on the role of the military or security agencies in this election, it appeared that in some cases the military actually took over um, the election security. And this is contrary um, to what Nigerian public were told. Um, even stakeholders were informed around the security architecture for these elections. We have it on record and there are reports that in some places in the country the military shot um, um, citizens. In, in Yobe we've got reports from Yaga watching the vote where the army shot um, a young uh, man who was just going to cast his vote. Um, we also have reports where, uh, where someone was a attempted to snatch a ballot box and then he was also shot dead um, yesterday. But um, it, it, I, I think that Nigerians um, uh, need to have a serious conversation around um, the role that the military plays for our elections. And what happened yesterday is totally unacceptable. The IG had given assurances that the police is in charge, and INEC also informed stakeholders the police are in charge. But the role that the military play in this election, it's something that in the next couple of days, we're going to have to talk about it, and there has to be some form of accountability. We can't have our citizens dying in an activity that ordinarily should be a civil affair. We, 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 I, I just can't phantom. I just can't phantom why we've got this huge deployment of military men for our elections 
And this whole militarization of our elections, that's totally unacceptable. And this is something that needs to be addressed. But lastly, uh, and I think we can't let this sleep, is to commend the NYSC members, the youth call members, that despite in the face of intimidation, in the face of disenchantment with the kind of treatment that they were subjected to, some, they were resilient, they were performing their job with the patriotism that Nigeria deserves, and they deserve commendation. A lot of them were threatened in rivers in some states um, last night and all through the coalition process, but Nigeria needs to rise up to protect its citizens, especially when they are in national service. But lastly, again, is to commend Nigerians um, that despite this postponement, they came out to cast their vote. Um, I, in commenting on voter turnout, um, I, 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 it will be premature to actually assess, but for us at the Aga Africa watching the vote and using the PVT, um, later today we will be releasing our projection for voter turnout. And I will tell you that um, it may not be what people actually think. No, oh, okay. Uh, I thought I was going to hear the projection for the results. <laughs> but, uh, I thought uh, uh, Samson not going there yet. <laughs> so, Samson, one of the things that you have brought out, uh, th these five points are like lecture notes for me, and I think I'm going to have to sit down and study them. But one of the issues that you have raised there, um, you, know, you know, is the reason that some of the, we have we've had skirmishes here and there. One of the things that was not made clear was that was that of the election security chain of command. Yes, the police was said to be in charge of the entire process. But from what you saw, from what you have observed, from the reports you have had, would you say that is exactly what happened? Uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't say that that's what happened. Um, yesterday, we, there were presence of security officials at the polling station. But if you look at specific states, and I, and I think it was intentional. Um, this is my reading and analysis of the situation. I think it was, it was intentional, the role that the military played. Now, first, let's look at Abuja. Let me talk about Abuja. In Karokefi Road, um, just, just um, a few um, kilometers away from the channel studio here in Abuja, as at 6.30 a.m. yesterday, the military had a blockade. Um, and they prevented INEC officials. INEC officials, they prevented accredited observers and even voters who were trying to assess um, their polling stations from going to cast their vote. It took escalation. We had to escalate this and reaching out to the INEC chairman um, that this was the situation around um, the, the Karo Kefi Road um, where the military had a blockade. They weren't even allowing anybody pass. Whether you were accredited, whether you had identification, and that's unacceptable because that's intimidation. If you look at Rivers, for instance, look at Yobe, for instance, where were, these, where were the Nigerian um, police um, in trying to ensure that this protest was, 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 was safe for citizens? Let's take Lagos. We know that thugs were moving, whether they were moving in tricycles or not, what we know is these people were moving from polling station to another, and there was restriction of movement. And based on the deployment plan, and the military were supposed to be at specific and strategic points um, just to ensure that there is no breach of peace. How come these guys were moving from one point to another and no one, no one actually prevented them? We've also not heard of any arrest. So it appeared that in some states, the military actually took over um, the, the entire security of these elections uh, and not the Nigerian police. But the police, to a large extent, they, also, they were very professional um, in the way they treated um, observers and the way they treated voters. Although in a state like Yobe, for instance, we had a report where a police officer prevented observers from accessing the polling, um, um, polling unit. We also had a case where observers were arrested. Um, in fact, one of our observers in Kafanchan was arrested and detained at the, at the Kafanchan um, Area Command of the Nigerian police. It took several intervention and responsiveness from the head, headquarters here in Abuja before the, uh, observers, the observer was released. These are incidences. We may think that they are actually isolated, but you look at the trends and you begin to ask yourself fundamental questions that should we actually even get to this point if we are committed to free, fair, and credible elections? 
Because, uh, Samson, um, one thing again, uh, as you reeled out those uh, uh, five instances where election criteria must be met before elections are to be validated, uh, one of the areas you talked about still uh, concerning security and where the army, you say, killed a man in Yobe State and uh, another person who was just passing by was killed. Uh, we've had situations in River State as well where, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Bayelsa State where a, a photojournalist was also killed in the process of all this. But uh, now that we have had this recorded, it's in record now, what do you expect can be done by uh, the players, the stakeholders in this, the, uh, the INEC in, in the first place, the police in the second place, we're expecting that the IGP is going to say something about it and possibly the, uh, the high-ranking officials of the army. What, what, are, what are your expectations? First is accountability. Accountability, accountability, accountability. If we don't hold people to account, if heads do not roll on account of this conduct um, by our security agents, then expect that um, the levels of impunity would actually increase. If no one actually calls the military to order, if erring security officials fail um, to uphold the principles of democratic policing of, um, or, or civil policing of elections, or even comply with their own code of conduct, then we, then, then we have a big issue to address. And I think for INEC, um, what, as, as one of the, as the lead agency in this, um, we'll need to um, call on the, the IG of police, call on the chief of army staff and other um, security outfits um, to, um, to really, you, you know, penalize those officers who are responsible for this. The second is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, even though he is a candidate in this election, he is the commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the oath he swore was to protect and defend the fidelity of our constitution and to defend our welfare and security. Now, if the life of citizens are threatened, then the president cannot fold his hands. The president needs to also make, um, take action on this and ensure that those who killed citizens, those who killed citizens um, in this election are actually brought to book. Within the army, we know that they've got um, a self-correcting mechanism, whether through court martial or whatever mechanism they have. I hope that those mechanisms will be activated and the officers who are responsible for this are held to account. For us as citizens and civil society, we will continue to place this demand, and thanks to the media for amplifying these issues, um, for putting the evidence out there um, as it is, so that the public will know that the same people who ought to protect us are the same people who are now killing us. And this is unacceptable, but I would say that anyone who has, who has, killed an individual, killed a fellow citizen, has to be held to account. If we okay. don't do that, then we are not serious about okay. constitutional democracy.